So I'm with Jeff Marcico from the Cathafian Group. He was one of the founding members of the group. Uh, he's a specialist in lots of different areas of community banking. And I've gotten to know Jeff over the last several years, largely through his writing. If you've not encountered his blog, Jeff for Banks, you really ought to take a look at it. Uh, in my estimation, Jeff, among other things, in addition to being a great advocate for community banking and an advisor to community banking, he's a real asset because he, he provides a really valuable perspective. Uh, I think a lot of that comes, and Jeff, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you a question here about your experience here. You had a lot of experience in banking before you got into consulting. Yeah, I, I, I tell people I started out making microfiche in the IT department uh, in the basement, uh, going to school in the day, working at night. You know, the chemicals did have an impact on me, Ned. <laughs> well, I think, I think it's really important that you survive that initial foray. But a lot of your perspective is looking very closely at what's going on in banks. And one of the areas that is interesting for at least a lot of community banks is the talent question. And historically, when you started in banking, when I started in banking, a lot of community bankers looked to the large banks to produce the bankers they needed. A lot of commercial lenders cut their teeth in a large bank, and then they were wooed away by a community bank. And community banks thrived on that kind of train of talent. That stopped because a lot of the big banks stopped preparing people in the ways that community banks were looking for. They were, they were looking for generalists where the, the commercial banks, the large ones were preparing specialists or the large banks stopped training. So I guess I'm curious from your vantage point, you, you deal with a lot of banks across the country. How do community bank CEOs deal with this talent issue? Well, it depends on the area that you're talking about because it's almost a little different uh, per area. Maybe we could talk on the commercial lender issue. It's always a big issue. And a lot of banks have experienced this because it used to be in the day that somebody would train through the big banks, as you had mentioned, but that has gone away. We're talking about a generation ago. We're, we're yeah. already a generation past that. And that e we're even aging me here, and, and, and that hasn't happened in so long. But our, our fill-in was pick them off the street. Mm -hmm. And what we ended up doing is we ended up sort of bidding up the, the cost of, of, of getting talent, and that worked initially because um because the payback uh, of getting a commercial lender because they would bring a big percentage of their book over within six months eight mm -hmm. months they would basically be paying for themselves in that short amount of time mm -hmm. so it wasn't a budget buster to be able to do that yeah yeah now that banks have much more sophistication in the covenants of their loans so it's very difficult for a lender to bring over a book as quickly as they once did mm -hmm. Paybacks becoming less and less, and those lenders from 10, 15 years ago are pretty old now. Mm -hmm. And so banks are looking to replace another cohort of lenders, and we've fallen behind. Now, this gets to uh, uh, if we recognized this 10 to 15 years ago, we would have gotten those entry level college kids and built a career path that developed mm -hmm. them into a well-rounded and culturally fit within our organization lender within our organization where you, you start off as the junior credit analyst you work into a more senior credit analyst you develop them along the way mm -hmm. and then you go to a portfolio manager uh, perhaps even you go out and you work in the branch for a little bit or you become mm -hmm. a small business banker and then you become a junior commercial lender sometimes feeding off the crumbs of these more senior people doing those mm -hmm. credits that that nobody did all along the bank is developing them they don't need internal trainers anymore because of all the external resources available right. trade associations uh, uh consultants uh, a bank could build a robust training program to build up their own commercial lenders but we haven't done it because we opted for the pick them off the street approach and now we have a gap so, and, it, and, and it's interesting because i think it, it is a demographic issue because there is a whole cohort of, of bankers, particularly on the commercial side, that is about ready to retire. So you're looking at this situation where I think that the community banks that are, are addressing the issue with trying to bring people along in the way you talked about, bring somebody in who's got all the right stuff, the right DNA, the, the right attitude, but it does take time, which people have to realize. And even though you can use outside 
vendors, you can use RMA, you can use outside courses through your state bankers association, it still takes time. The risk is always there that you're going to lose these people. Sure. There's also, so, a, risk, there's also a risk you won't develop them and they'll stay. <laughs> Good point. But yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, there is the risk that you're going to lose those people. And I think you, it's worth the risk. I just think that banks are going to have to do it. They put it in their cultural DNA and they develop succession plans all the way down to their commercial lender uh, so that we have a pipeline. Imagine, Ned, if you have uh, a 20 person lending staff and you have an eight person credit analyst cadre, mm -hmm. and every two years your credit analyst graduate into becoming either portfolio managers or, or commercial lenders themselves. Imagine having that pipeline. You have two or three junior credit analysts, you have two or three middling credit analysts and two or three senior credit analysts that are ready to launch. You know, and maybe the senior one, one or two senior credit analysts likes the credit vertical yeah. and they aspire to be the assistant credit manager or the chief credit officer, and that's fine. But if you had that pipeline of people already filled in your organization you'd be in a far better spot than somebody who has to say you know jane or john is retiring in two years we need to find somebody off our competitor to pick off the street yeah you're right and i think the economics of it actually can make sense because when you think about bringing in an experienced lender at what may be a rather inflated price in the marketplace you might do better to bring in two junior people and work them and develop the right kind of cultural uh, right. approach to lending that your bank really seeks out. Because you bring somebody else in, you don't know that they're going to adapt to your approach. They're going to embrace your way of doing business. Right. Imagine if a, if a bank measured the profit performance of a lender's portfolio and the lender's year-end bonus was based on the improved profit performance of their portfolio versus the volume of loans they put on the books during the year. Now, if you picked off a lender off the street, they probably wouldn't come to your bank because they're used to being compensated mm -hmm. on volume. Yeah. So, you know, if, if I have a $20 million volume requirement in a year, get me two commercial loans, I'll price them as skinny as possible and I'll golf most of the year. That's the way I'll hit my 20 million. I mean, that's not the way it happens, of course. You have a lot of coaching and everything in the meantime. But if you bring somebody up into the continuous profit improvement of your own portfolio, you almost can't pick somebody off the street this, this, uh, today because not many commercial lenders are compensated that way. Yeah, good point. Thanks, Jeff. That's a, that's a very valuable perspective.